Right, my name's James and I paint miniatures. This is Speed 37 Minis. Okay, so welcome to What's on the Bench, episode 11. This time we're working on layer highlights on the red flesh on the metal hive turret. This is the second layer of pure red by the army painter, which is quite transparent, but if you build it up in thin layers, it builds up a gradual highlight on flesh. So I've just got some pure red on the palette and I'm just watering it down, a couple of bits of water from the paint pot or water pot I should say, um, and then just getting it to a nice consistency so that it can be layered on. It does need to be quite thin and quite transparent in order for layering to work. There's really no point in going for it if the paint is super thick. Now, as you need to be more precise with this stage than the previous stage, you're actually painting a slightly smaller area. I'm actually using a very old Games Workshop detail brush, but something like a modern Games Workshop S layer brush or a size zero brush from most manufacturers would work just fine. The idea is to paint a slightly smaller area than the previous coat in order to have that area slightly more highlighted and then the area next to it is the first highlight and then the base coat beyond that so you get this nice gradual buildup of color. The order I'm painting this in is the same as the highlights before, starting with the left leg right at the base by the hoof, and then I'll work up that leg, do the other leg, and so on and so forth, just as I did with the previous video on the hive tyrant, which I think was what's on the bench, episode 9. Now it may not be super obvious the difference between the base colour and the highlight that I'm doing but I think you can see where I'm applying the brush just anywhere that needs a highlight, anywhere that would be in the light um, just needs to be slightly highlighted more than it was um, and I've included some photos at the end of this video so you can see the difference between the first and second highlights uh, so it should be a little more obvious under those conditions but as I say you can see where I'm placing the brush so it should be fairly straightforward. You will find that whilst I'm highlighting all around this area on the leg, I'm actually leaving the bit in the middle deliberately dark because it looks like some kind of tendons or otherwise inner detail. Uh, and I want there to be some contrast between that and the highlighted flesh, as I will be doing on some other areas like the rib cage and the arms. And so I'm highlighting everything around it, but not the actual area in the middle, just so that there's some kind of... Uh, you know, extra detail and contrast there. Now I'm doing my best to show you what I'm painting. Unfortunately, the XL paint handle is slightly getting in the way of what I'm doing. I'm trying not to have the brush bump into the camera either which is easier said than done so please bear with me on these stages. Now the 
the top of the leg is a little simpler because I dry brushed this earlier. It's actually shown just a few small areas down the side of the leg and the very top of the leg that need highlighting. So if I focus my efforts there, it doesn't need a lot of paint, but it will look more highlighted and an overall lighter color when it's done. trying to paint the inside of the leg as well and I suppose I could omit these areas on the basis that would kind of be in shadow or not that visible but as you can see there is webbing at the front that you can actually see quite clearly and so it makes sense to me to just paint a little bit of a highlight on these even though I might not highlight these quite as far as some of the other bits of flesh it just seemed to make sense to me to try and get a bit of highlighting on them try and add a bit of interest. Now because I'm doing this in sub-assemblies, normally the tail would be in the way of doing some of these areas, so having left it off it makes it a lot easier to paint the legs and the, the sort of lower torso area. And now moving on to the second leg, we're going in exactly the same pattern, painting the bit above the hoof and then moving on to the ankle, the lower leg and so on, just as I did before. Now when doing this area you will find that these uh, sort of spikes at the back of the leg do actually vary from side to side. There is a little bit more detail on the left leg than there is on the right leg. So I'm having to make up for some of that with a little bit of paint. So this does take me a little bit longer to do than the other side and see me going back and forth around that area just to make sure it has proper highlights. It's a little hard to get into what looks like a kind of calf muscle in this area and as it is on the underside of the leg I dare say you could skip this but I haven't done so on things like the Tyranid Warriors and it seemed to go across quite well when I posted them on Instagram so I'm sticking with it for the time being. Right, as I move on to this webbing at the back of the leg, you may not realise it, but this is actually where I broke the model trying to change its pose. Um, most of that webbing is actually made of green stuff, so that is a, a step which isn't as exaggerated on the standard model. It's just that the way it was glued to its original base, uh, the previous owner had sort of bent the legs inwards to make it fit on a small base, and as I tried to bend the leg back, it actually snapped off completely. When I glued it into position that looked natural, there was a huge gap at the back with that I had to fill with green stuff to make it look like it just had the natural webbing continue. I wasn't sure about these upright areas just below the torso because again I'm not sure how well these will actually show up once the arms are on and everything. But as we've got it broken down into sub-assemblies I just thought it was worth putting a bit of paint on even if this ends up being the last highlight on these. I'm not sure it will be but it might be. 
depending on what I can get to later on and how it looks relative to the rest of the model. Because I don't want that area to be a focal point, it's so small. I'd rather have like the, the rib cage or the face or what have you be the actual focal point. Now, as I say, the rib cage will be something of a focal point, so I'm actually taking care to do a bit of extra highlighting here because in order to sort of draw the eye, I actually want this area to be overall brighter than the surrounding areas. And then I'm leaving the, the bits in between the ribs darker so there'll be greater contrast, so it should naturally have a kind of, well, I suppose an artist would call it a visual hierarchy, so you're actually focusing on the rib cage and or the head area which of course I'll highlight the head a lot as well, um, just in order to make it draw the eye compared to the other areas on the model. You'll also see me painting some vertical lines because the way this rib cage is constructed, it seems to have certain points where it actually, like, goes around the corner but actually comes to a point so I'm actually painting those almost as if edge highlighting but of course there will be further highlights that go on this which will be brighter colours I'm just laying the foundations for those edge highlights and hopefully if I do thinner lines with the lighter colours you'll actually see a nice graduation between the light and the dark colours Also highlighting the little, the little nubs between the arms which actually appear to be uh, flesh hooks. Now I don't actually know if in the current rules hive tyrants are allowed to have flesh hooks but certainly in the second edition when this one came out they were. Um, so it's actually got them moulded into the sides of the ribcage. And then I wasn't sure about this step, I actually highlighted the arm stubs if you like. Um, but I'm not actually sure once the arms are glued on how much of this is going to show because it might be completely covered up by the arm. I just thought that if there is a bit of it showing and I've already highlighted it, it'll look better than if I've completely, you know, left it bare and need to paint it later on. Apologies for the fantastic camera work that doesn't actually show you the model being painted, but I have to rotate it whatever way just to get under the upper arm and do a bit of highlighting there. Um, and you find the same on the other side when I get to that area. The upper portions, of course, I can paint very easily showing it to the camera, but the undersides are a little bit more difficult. on these arm stubs and then that should be the body actually finished at this stage so I can move on to other areas. As before, the next item to paint is the tail. Now, again, I don't want the tail to be a particular focal point, so my idea is to highlight it only so far so that it doesn't draw attention away from other areas that should be focal points. But I am going to do the first and second layer highlights with the Army Paint of Pure Red and probably leave it there. So you see all these areas where it has ridges and these sort of uh, circular patterns on the side of the tail I'm going to actually fully highlight at this stage but then when it comes to doing even lighter colours on say the body or the head I'm actually going to omit the tail completely so that it remains only at this stage.
Now again with this older metal model the tail is asymmetrical so whilst I'm taking a lot of care and attention on this side of the tail where it has a series of little divots by the armour plates on the other side they're much less pronounced and it ends up being more just like a line and a couple of verticals and then you're completely done whereas of course the ridges on the other side of the tail need doing fully both sides. Now there is a certain order to doing this, you can probably tell I'm painting this entirely on one side first, so although these ridges go from one side to the other, I'm actually painting them on the one side of the tail first, and I'll paint the other side of the tail completely, and then I'll look at the middle of it, where the ridges are, and if they're, if they're not connecting in the middle, I'll then go over it with the same colour, and what that will do is where, anywhere where it overlaps it will actually be ever so slightly brighter. So you see that's the one side done completely and now the other side I haven't done at all and then it will just be the same approximate pattern just to go over and highlight just a little more than the last time. Oh, paint's getting a bit dry so we're adding a bit more water to thin it down, twisting the brush to a fine point and then carrying on as before. I've actually mounted this in its correct orientation, it actually means the wire I've mounted it on is slightly getting in the way for this step. It's a minor inconvenience though, it's not actually half as bad as you think. I have also got my finger on the actual tail. Now this might seem a bit over the top, but it's actually simply to steady the item because again with the wire bent round it actually acts almost like a spring. So if I don't do that, the, every time I put the brush to it, it actually wobbles all over the place. So. I just have to keep it steady. Uh, there was probably a better way of mounting this, so I just didn't come up with one in time for making this video. As this line goes down the tail, I've been trying to paint the lines going towards the armour plates, but they actually get less and less defined as we go on, so they reach the point where you just can't paint them anymore, and then I have to move on to the sides of the tail and the ridges in the middle.
No, as I said before, I'm just checking the middle of the tail and any areas that I haven't gone over doing each side, I'm just going to paint in the middle. And if there is any area later on that looks a bit too dark, I will just correct that later with a bit more pure red. But I think it'll be okay at this point because the paint is still fairly wet all over. And it should just make a nice highlight down the middle, which is, I suppose, where it would naturally would look a bit lighter. Now that having been said, you've probably noticed I've completely omitted the tail tip so far and that's partly because all of the reds in there are completely recessed and I'm not actually sure if they should be highlighted or not because I think the surrounding carapace and pincers will actually overshadow anything that I do. Not to mention that because they are set in, um, they're actually naturally in shadow as well. Okay, so I'm actually highlighting the area around the pincers again. This may actually end up getting covered up uh, later on, so it may not be seen. But I've generally found it best to have a go, and then if you can't see it afterwards, too bad. But on the other hand, if I've missed this out, I suppose it would show up quite badly later on. Next up, we have the head. And although this is a small section, I want to highlight it quite a lot so that the overall colour is a little bit lighter than the surrounding flesh. The idea being that with everything around it, that will have a greater contrast and then our eye will be naturally drawn towards the head and face. And then of course there will also be high contrast in things like the eyes, the teeth, the pincers, the head armour, all sorts of things like that. So you've got the red and black together, but then the red will also look quite a lot lighter. So. This, despite being a very small piece, will actually take a little bit of work to do compared to some of the other small areas on the model. Now the exception to this is there are a lot of veins at the sides of the head. Um, because similar areas elsewhere on the model are being left dark, I'm going to leave those dark as well. This will enhance the contrast, but it will also tie in with the rest of the model. That having been said, I am highlighting in between the veins and I'm also trying to highlight the bottom edge of the sort of craters or holes or whatever you want to call them on the sides of the head, uh, just as if that is where it would naturally catch the light. And obviously again, where if you've got the highlighted flesh and then a dark vein and then highlighted flesh, you've got more contrast as well. Am I going too crazy on the underside? I mean, I'm doing the chin where you can see it, but on the underside of the face itself, you're not actually going to see very much. So any highlighting I do under here might actually be a waste of time. Finally, it might seem like a small area, but I'm just highlighting a bit at the base of the pincers and then on top of the head. And that pretty much wraps up doing the head. Now, of course, this, this particular piece will get highlighted a lot more with lighter colours. Um, but 
obviously at this stage it's comparable with a lot of other areas on the model. Moving on to the upper left arm, or the sword arm if you prefer. Now this one is actually fairly straightforward, having dry brushed, particularly these are very sort of um, textured I suppose you'd say. You can actually see all of the raised bits are already a little highlighted, so all I've got to do is just go over them again and it will enhance the idea that this is actually a slightly lighter colour overall, but then also that it's got a, a wide range of highlights and shaded areas. Now, much like with the rib cage, there are areas on these arms that have little cutouts and it has these sort of ribbed sections showing, which I assume is meant to be some kind of innards. And whilst the official Games Workshop colour scheme seems to have, have these painted black with grey highlights, almost as if they were some kind of rubber, I've actually found it works just as well to just leave them the base colour with the wash and that way you've got like a dark red innards and then a brighter red flesh or brighter red carapace I suppose you'd say on the outside keeping them safe which seems to work and I mean I've, uh, I've done this on a number of Tyranids and it seems to look correct so I'm sticking with it. Now whilst the layout of the highlights is fairly simple, these arms are still quite small pieces. So I am having to take my time, just carefully go around the lines and highlights that are already there, preferably painting a slightly smaller area, just with the same colour again to make it a little bit lighter. Obviously the ridges around the elbow just get brighter and brighter and brighter, but things like the actual main arms Actually, I want to have a kind of graduation from light to dark going across them. So you find I just take some time to do this step, try and get it right. Now as we get onto the actual hand and fingers, although obviously some of it's partly obscured by the sword handle, um, I am actually going to try and highlight this a little bit more uh, than the surrounding arm, so even though it's a small area this is going to get a little bit more highlighting, uh, particularly around the fingers, the knuckles, uh, the edges of the recess sections and so on. And then of course it will also be greater contrast with the dark claws, so that you've got the most highlighted sections next to pure black, and then the claws themselves will be highlighted through shades of grey. I haven't yet decided how to paint the actual bone sword there. Okay, so moving on to the arm below, which has the whip. Uh, this is very similar to the arm above, but obviously it doesn't have a armoured shoulder pad, so you actually see this recessed area is a little bigger and he's painting all the way around, and then of course the top 
of the arm is also exposed to the light, which we assume to be coming vaguely from above. like the arm above this is a continuation of the previous highlights uh, with particular focus on the edges of the recesses and the raised areas which you'll see at the elbows and around the wrist which have to be highlighted to be quite bright as per almost like the the old school heavy metal team used to highlight those a lot in almost like a pastel orange I'm not going to go quite that far myself I'm going to try and keep it in the red but it is going to be more highlighted than you see it now the other arm actually lacked these there are spikes coming out of the elbow which we black fading to grey so I'm also by the same logic as the claws on the fingers I'm highlighting the edges of those pieces a lot and then that way there'll be a great deal of contrast between the red flesh and the claws and then also a great deal of contrast between the recessed areas and the highlighted flesh shows on cameras but on the camera rather but some of these areas on the arms are actually quite dark from the base color and the wash that was used and so I'm actually trying to actively avoid those areas so that again you've got some areas that are very highlighted and some areas that are meant to be somewhat shaded and that way you get a bit more contrast not in a sense of like stealing the attention away from other areas but just so that you can see a full range of tones on the arm without going too crazy about it. Now again when it comes to the hands we can do quite a lot of highlighting because they much like the face and the eyes, the hands tend to be the next natural focal point, so obviously the raised side of the fingers where I believe the light will be catching you get a lot of highlighting, as do any of the joints such as the knuckles. Last but by no means least are the two arms holding the gun or bioweapon on the right side of the model. Now this is like painting the previous two arms but where you had them separate before they're now in one because of course the one's holding the top of the gun and the other's holding the underside. So you have to do both arms in situ but pretty much the order is just as before, you highlight around the edge of the recesses, you work towards the raised areas around the elbow and the wrist, you highlight the top of the lower arm as well, because of course the top of the upper arm has a big piece of carapace so you don't have to do that bit. Um, so it is just the same as the other side really, it's just now you're having to do two parts in one.
Now having said it's just as simple as the previous side, I was slightly surprised to find that this upper arm, particularly forearm area, um, particularly on the inside, actually has a surprising number of lines and other details to catch. Um, so I was quite surprised that that actually took a lot longer than I had intended, but I thought it was worth doing because of course, from certain angles, as you look at the model, if you're looking at the face, right next to it will be this forearm. Now you might think this a little bit strange, but I actually fully highlight the upper arm, including the hand completely before I move on to the lower arm. And that way, as I'm working, even if I were to get interrupted now, I'd know where I was. Whereas if I was building up both arms, I'd have a moment of confusion of like, oh, how far on the lower arm did I get? How far on the upper arm did I get? Whereas it's a lot simpler to just do each arm in full and then if I have to put it down or the doorbell goes or the phone goes or something I can have a pretty good idea of where I was when I come back and it just suits me to work in this fashion. Now, having completely done the upper arm, I'm not going to go back to it unless I spot a mistake or a problem. And so I'm just now highlighting the lower arm. Now, I do have a moment of uh, doubt about this particular arm because I've noticed there is a sort of bubble in the paint, which I haven't corrected earlier. So on the back of the arm, there's actually a hole. And of course, the debate now is, I've kind of gone with it up till now. What do I do? Should I highlight that? like highlight the bottom of it as if it's a natural crater on, on the uh, hive tyrant's arm. And so I look at it a few times, but in the end I think I just ignore it. So you can see it there next to the brush. It's actually just a hole in the arm, which shouldn't actually be there. What it means is I've got a bubble in the primer and then that's burst as it's set. And then I've just not bothered to try and fill it in after there. And then I've just kind of noticed it whilst painting this. Now in terms of realism and lighting and logical orders and so on, you'll notice that I am actually fully highlighting this lower arm even though it would naturally be in the shadow of the upper arm. Again, I'm not going for any kind of hyper-realism here. You know, this is a quite, uh, you know, fantastic creature, if you will. It's not likely to count as very realistic at the best of times, so I'm just highlighting the flesh and if it naturally falls in shadow, it will naturally be darker. Okay, I'm going out of my way to highlight the base of the spikes, even though they're on the underside of the arm, it will just enhance the contrast in that area. And of course, because they are sticking out and there will be contrast, you will notice them on the final model. And then as before, moving up to the wrist and then going all out to make sure that the full hand and all of the joints are fully highlighted. Now as I get to the end of this piece, I'm actually done for this stage, I'm going to show you a couple of still pictures, but those of you who followed the last video for this model will perhaps notice a continuity error. I actually put in a picture which I thought was after one layer highlight, it turned out to be after two, so when I say this is after two layer highlights and it's a different picture, you've actually seen this picture before in the previous video, I put it in by mistake, it should have been a different picture. So I'm just gonna have to live with that for now, unfortunately.
Right, so that's pretty much done, and then I'm going to show you how it looked after one layer highlight. This, as you can see, it's quite a subtle highlight. It's hard to tell that I've actually done all that much beyond the basic dry brushing in the fist and red, and then we move to a slightly more highlighted look where you can start to see a bit more definition. And you'll see why I want to continue doing this to make it even more contrast. Right, if you've stuck with it this far, Firstly, thank you, thank you for watching. If you did actually like the video, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell-shaped icon so you get notifications telling you when the next video will be out. I hope that will be soon. Thank you for watching.